हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे इज फिफ्थ ऑफ अक्टूबर एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइस इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ हिंदू विल टेक ऑल आर्टिकल्स अलोंग विद द बैकग्राउंड एज वेल एज वे फॉरवर्ड एंड आई वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन फ्रॉम आर टेलीग्राम चैनल लिंक फॉर टेलीग्राम इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब नाउ लेट स्टार्ट विद द डिस्कशन बट बिफोर दैट फर्स्ट लेट्स टेक लेट्स टेक द ओवर ऑफ एंटायर न्यूज so that we can understand that which articles are important in today's newspaper so here we have first page of delhi edition and here you can see first article talks about the seven dead as glacier lake burst in sikkim so uh, basically guys we see this thing that as climate change and many as as climate change has been wreaking havoc we have earlier seen in uttarakhand and himachal pradesh there were there were the catastrophes that has happened and now in the sikkim we see that the lake outburst has happened then further moving on after that here we have one article cryo wins chemistry nobel for quantum dots we'll take this particular article this is important for exam then we have these advertisements in city section the tenders regional issues advertisements are there nothing much important is there so we'll reach directly to editorial section okay now in editorial first article is retribution for the south okay accolades for the north we'll take this particular article for examination fine then side article emergency era so this article talks about recently uh, editors and some of the functionaries of the news click has been arrested under the charge of uapa unlawful activities prevention act so article is criticizing that this is an attack on free media and it uh, reminds us of the emergency era okay however guys in this particular article exam specific substance is not there so i'll not advise you to go too much in detail in this article then further moving on keeping tabs on carbon with an accounting system we'll take this particular article now this article is talking about the physics nobel prize already we have discussed it also then moving on women's quota panchayat to parliament we'll see this particular article for examination what is there then the shift in bjp's kashmir approach state of play article article is uh this is a political article not important for our examination so will not go in that then further moving on the roller coaster that was the 2023 monsoon so article talks about the deficient rains that have been there 6% deficient rains are there however you are not required to track that every state every region how many centimeters of rain was received how many percentage it is deficient than the normal so every state's analysis is not needed then moving on to text and context page so the impact of bihar caste survey will take this particular article for exam then what are the implications of kevin mccarthy's ouster okay so basically it shows that how divided the republican party is in us again guys article doesn't contains exam related substance for our paper not important so no need to go in that then moving on to next page so this is a bibliography article in bibliography article they talk about some book premise or if a some new book has been published about that it is discussed now this particular article it is talking about a new book that uh, it it talks about the book by alok bhalla and chandra prakash who re, who unravels the mystery behind the allah baksh now understand this thing allah baksh is uh, allah baksh bal baksh was a painter who has narrated mahabharat who has narrated mahabharat through the paintings allah baksh allah baksh was patronized by raja jay singh of udaipur raja jay singh of udaipur now uh, there was nothing not much known about allah baksh that who he was or about a lot of details about his personal life so they tried to explore that particular thing just it has been provided i have read this entire article but article doesn't contains much of important substance okay so these are the miniature sized paintings that are that have been that uh, have been drawn by allah baksh which depicts mahabharat is it clear then further moving on uapa case against portal for plot to disrupt sovereignty of india police so again this article is in that line where the news click reporters and uh, news click functionaries have been arrested not much important for examination no need to go that media bodies right to cgi call for norms on interrogation for journalist because when we talk about the free press free media it is core uh, it is very important for our democracy and often it is said that government has try to muzzle free speech by arresting media personnel then moving on in this particular direction uh, uh, bihar caste census is surveys being discussed here we'll take the relevant articles 
political dimension is not important just academic understanding we need to go in that then in first election since 2019 ladakh uh, registered 77.6% voting okay uh, however um, not very much important you do need not to see how many voter turn how many percentage voter turnout was there in different different state election then guys we have these tenders etc uh, news uh, here new defense indigenization list has futuristic weapon system we'll take this article and the relevant things will take it up then strict measures will be taken say cbfc chief on corruption charges nothing much important is there then uh, moving on again on world page us speaker kevin mccarthy ousted in historic house vote pakistan plan to evict afghan unacceptable says taliban okay now guys understand this particular thing that as we talk about the world or international page i have told you this multiple number of a times that every other article is not important those articles are important which either contain some issue related to india's foreign policy or india's international interest okay moving on moving on uh government eases aircraft recovery rules we'll take this particular article for the examination then guys further we have the sports page and in last there is a science page fine and uh, just a minute yes in science page this article talks about this article talks about what is uterus transplant and what does it mean to have one okay so we'll see what is relevant in this article so this is guys all about the newspaper overview and now let's discuss all the relevant articles one by one in detail and guys i request you that if you are liking the video then please do hit the like button because it helps our channel to grow by the side of the youtube algorithm okay then moving on and let's take first article uh, let's take the let's take a uh, gs quotation that we take in every class now this gs quotation can be used to complement your uh, answers in examination as well as in essays you can use these gs quotations so today we are going to take quotation from arthur schopenhauer now arthur schopenhauer says compassion is the basis of morality compassion is the basis of morality now what does compassion means compassion compassion is when you see another person in pain and when you take steps to reduce that person's pain when you take steps to reduce suffering of that person that is a compassion now compassion is a very important value it makes a human and there can be no ethics there can be no morality without compassion even amartya sen has given his niti versus nyay approach and in niti versus nyay amartya sen says that nyay is more important than niti merely following the rules and nyay is based on compassion okay so compassion is the foundation for morality it is the foundation for ethics as per arthur schopenhauer you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 4 ethics gs paper number 4 ethics now moving on and let's take first article for today first article for today trio wins chemistry nobel for quantum dots we'll take this particular article for gs paper number 3 as well as for prelims science and technology for prelims science and technology we'll see this particular article now first of all uh, some basic background information we are going to take and after that background information will go in this particular article let's understand some basic information so uh, guys from past 3 days we are discussing nobel prizes which are now being given okay so this entire week every day one nobel prize will be given now when we talk about the nobel prizes nobel prizes were originally given in the fields of five fields nobel prize was given it was given in the field of physics chemistry physiology also called as medicine literature and peace okay now sixth category of nobel prize got added in 1968 by swerige's rix bank that is the sweden's central bank and a sixth nobel prize in category of economic sciences was also instituted so six nobel prizes are given now nobel prizes are given in memory of alfred nobel who was a notable inventor and chemist and was very much notable for his invention of dynamite okay so in alfred nobel's remembrance these nobel prizes are given okay now when we talk about nobel prizes understand this particular thing that all the nobel prizes fine except peace they are given at sweden so all the nobel prizes that we have discussed till now and even nobel prize of chemistry that we are going to discuss now all they are being given at sweden and only one nobel prize that is peace category it is given at norway okay 
please download the synoptic notes because this information is not given in your article and also here you can see list of the people of india or indian origin who had got nobel prize which year they got and which category they got okay so that is about it now moving on guys so uh, already yesterday and day before yesterday as nobel prizes are being given we have discussed the two okay so i have written it in red color and if you have not seen it i will insist you that please watch yesterday's and day before yesterday's newspaper analysis video okay so we have discussed already nobel prize for medicine that has been given now nobel prize for medicine was given to uh, was given to through two of the two of the uh, two of the physicians that is catalin carico and american physicians drew weisman why they were given nobel prize they were given for the mrna vaccines against covid 19 okay we have discussed what are mrna vaccines why mrna vaccines are believed to be more safe all that thing we have discussed then also yesterday now this we discussed i think uh, this we discussed on tuesday yesterday we discussed nobel prize in physics that have been given to three people okay and that nobel prize was given to the their uh, their development and their research in eto second physics okay eto second physics they have uh, they have came out with ultra quick light flashes that can enable the effective study of electrons effective study of electrons that thing also we have discussed eto side eto seconds okay then today we are going to discuss nobel prize for chemistry that has been given nobel prize for chemistry that has been given now one thing guys i just want to share you before starting the discussion of this particular article so you might have observed that in past two days as we are discussing nobel prizes we try to ensure that even a layman who has no background in science he or she should also understand but actually uh, okay so today there is the nobel prize in chemistry and it is taking me at least one and a half two hours just to understand myself because any website even the nobel website we go they assume that you know the basic background information but that is not the case so we'll try to ensure that in the most basic terms you should be able to understand this particular phenomena even if you are not from a science background okay now some basic information i want to tell guys understand this particular thing anything any element for example i have a gold brick in my hand every element's properties okay properties its qualities will be defined by the atoms that are constituting it okay for example i have this pen let's say it is made up of plastic okay so what are the qualities of this pen what is the texture of this all this will be defined by its atoms okay so any elements properties are defined by its constituting atoms now guys we see that further in atoms the quality the behavior of a particular atom okay will be decided by the electrons number of electrons that are there in it is it clear or not now understand one particular thing guys this is true but when we break anything when we break any element to very small size to very small size their behavior changes and their behavior changes as per the science now i am talking about the nano scale i am talking about the nano scale so point is this guys that when you break anything to nanometers when you break anything to nanometers the size will determine its property size will determine its behavior one thing you need to understand in your mind okay now guys what for what chemistry nobel prize has been given chemistry nobel prize has been given for quantum dots okay who has been given chemistry nobel prize chemistry nobel prize have been given to three people and i told you this thing also earlier that a nobel prize cannot be shared by more than three people maximum three people will share a nobel prize so it has been given to mongi g bavendi louis e bros and alexi e ekimov they have been given the chemistry nobel prize for quantum dots okay now understand this particular thing so what these quantum dots are quantum dots are quantum dots are 2 to 10 nanometer size particles which behave differently who gave different op who have different optical properties depending on their size depending on their size and these these const these elements could be of gold these elements could be of gold silver cadmium sulfur selenium okay 
I have tried to come out with a video and by that video you will understand something and then I will again come back to this particular article. So, let me show that particular video to you. Okay. So, guys you see this particular thing. Here you find that we have, now here you can see this powder kind of a thing. Okay. So, this is cadmium telluride. This is cadmium telluride. Okay. Now, you can see that there are these different, different vials, different, different bottles and here you see that in different, different vials, you see different kind of powder is there, little bit red kind of a powder, black kind of a powder, yellow kind of a powder and let us say, put liquid in this particular powder, okay. So, uh, here uh, there is this cadmium telluride and when the liquid is put, for example, it becomes yellowish, it becomes purple, it becomes red, it becomes green, it becomes uh, something maroon type of a color okay now just one thing i want to tell you that you find a different different color now all are cadmium telluride there is no dye that is added in that why different color different color is because of their size so same cadmium telluride when it is broken into the different different sizes it will give different different optical optical qualities and when ultraviolet light will be will be projected on that further their color will get changed, further their color will get changed. Is it clear or not? Okay, so on ultraviolet light, further their colors, okay. So now their size is different. So for example, cad uh, cadmium telluride here, it is 6 nanometers, here it is just 2 nanometers of cadmium telluride. Now what I was saying, what I was saying, going back, going back to that particular thing that I was explaining you, that the same element, when it will be broken to different, different size, its property will change. Its property will change when you will break it to small size when you will go to the nano scale. Clear? Now, this has a huge application in optics. This has a huge application in optics. Now, guys, when we talk about these nano dots, today we are using these quantum dots. Sorry, we are using these quantum dots in QLEDs. So, you might have seen Samsung QLEDs are there and many other brands are also are coming out with the QLEDs. So, word Q stands for quantum LEDs, quantum LEDs. So, in these particular television screens, there will be an LED, okay, which will excite these quantum dots and thus these quantum dots, depending on their size, they will emit different, different colors of light. And this quantum dots, they are further also being explored and their application can be there in bio, uh, in biological mapping, in mapping the biological tissues, okay, they can be used as the security markers in currency notes, okay, fine, or as well as also, also in the medical field, there is a huge application of this quantum dot, okay. So, this quantum dots, I, uh, the quantum dots, their development, their synthesis, okay, their discovery, it was done by these three scientists and for this, they have been given Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Nobel Prize in Chemistry, okay. So, these are, uh, okay, so these are, uh, and when we talk about the quantum dot, what are the size of these particles? It is 1000th of the width of a human hair, okay, 1000th of the width of a human hair. So, you make 1000 parts of the human hair, that will be the size of these, okay, and these elements will be of gold, silver, cadmium, sulfur or selenium, okay. So, this is about it for which Chemistry Nobel Prize has been given. And guys, I hope that you have understood this entire thing, okay, and this is the most simplest way that we can understand it. Please download the synoptic notes. All the things that I have explained are given here also. So, that is all about it. Now, moving on to the next article. Moving on to the next article. Okay. So, here we have article, the impact of Bihar caste survey. The impact of Bihar caste survey. Okay. So, just day before yesterday, uh, I will just insist you, if you have not seen the newspaper analysis, please go and there we have discussed this caste survey in lot more detail where I have discussed the Mandal 1.0, how Mandal 3.0 is coming, what is the politics of backwardness, all that thing we have discussed in lot more detail. So, just a advice if you have not seen it, please go and watch it. Now, coming to this particular article. Now, when we talk about this particular article, this article will be important for this article will be important for GS paper number one, social issues. Within the social issues, caste, 
and within the caste caste politics in india caste politics in india there this article is going to be important let's understand this thing so basically guys what has happened recently bihar government has completed their caste survey 2022 and as per this caste survey bihar government has provided this particular thing that extremely backward classes extremely backward classes their population and obc classes population is around 63% 63% okay and at the same time scheduled caste population is around scheduled caste population is around 19.65% okay and unreserved population general category unreserved general category their population is around 15.52% so roughly they provide this particular thing that around around 84.5 percent people 84.5 percent people in bihar either they are from scheduled caste scheduled tribe category or they are from backward classes category either ebc extremely backward classes or obcs other backward classes now what is the little bit of a background of this particular article first of all understand this okay now a question might come in your mind that as of today, don't we have the caste census in India? So let me explain you this particular thing. Basically, you know that every 10 years, we organize census. Last census was conducted in 2011. Census was due in 2021. It did not got conducted because of the pandemic. Up till now, it has not happened. Okay. Before that, 2001 census was there, 1991 census was there and likewise. Okay. When we talk about India, India is holding synchronous censuses since 1881. Before that also census were there, 1861 census were also there, 71 was also there, but it was a non-synchronous census. So India is conducting synchronous census of entire country since 1881. Now, understand, in the present form, the census that is being conducted, specific caste census is not held there. Caste census is not held. In census, we come out with the information as how many people from scheduled caste and scheduled tribe are there. But we don't come out with the detailed caste by caste census. For example, X caste, how many people? What is their representation in government job? What is their educational level? All such kind of thing. Caste by caste data is not conducted. Last caste census that happened in India was in 1931. 1931. And since 1931, caste census has not have happened. Now, Understand this particular thing, guys, that when we talk about the other backward classes, we give reservation to them. How much reservation is given to the other backward classes? Reservation is given 27%, 27% reservation. Now, there is a demand across the countries that are coming from the regional political parties, particularly those political parties that have mobilized people on the backwardness. They provide this particular thing that actually reservation to obc people is not fair is not representative because the reservation should be based on their population if population is 10 percent reservation should be 10 percent but if population is more reservation should be increased to more now first of all you need to understand that why only 27 percent reservation has been given to obc now when we talk about this particular background understand this particular thing guys that actually scheduled caste they are given 15% reservation. Scheduled tribe, they are given 7.5% reservation. Okay. Now, Mandal Commission came in 1979. It gave its report in 1980. And Mandal Commission said that 27% reservation is to be given to OBC. Why? Because there was a rule. And now, this rule is not unique to India. This is a kind of a rule that has been followed as a kind of a, uh, as a, kind of a dictum in uh, whenever the affirmative action thing comes and the rule is that reserved classes or reservation should not be more than 50 percent reservation should not be more than 15 50 percent so so fine they only have this 27 percent space so what happened 27 percent reservation for obc was given in total reservation raised to 49.5 percent 49.5 percent and this rule that reservation should not be more than 50 percent this rule that reservation should not be more than 50 percent it was then also given by supreme court in 1992 in 1992 where in indra sahani judgment in indra sahani judgment so earlier mandal commission recommended 27 percent in 1980 so that 50 percent limit is not breached and then supreme court also said that yes 
reservation should not be more than 50 percent. So therefore, reservation was restricted to 49.5 percent. Okay, 27 percent for OBC. Now, the political parties who mobilize people on the backwardness, they want that we need to, uh, they have a agenda. What is this agenda? This agenda can be broken in two steps. Step number one, conduct caste census in entire country and let's see how many percentage of people are backward. Okay, they will do that. Now, central government, they have kept this request to central government, but central government refused very categorically that will not conduct any caste census. So, Bihar government conducted it in, in their state and they have come out this thing that backward class people population is a 63 percent, is 63 percent. Okay. And now what they want, now what they want, they want that this 50 percent limit of reservation should be increased and represented and the reservation in proportion to number should be given. If 63 percent people are backward, increase it from 27 percent, go to 50 percent, 60 percent, but increase it. This is the new demand that they are going to make. So, this census report will pave way for the political demand for doing away the 50 percent ceiling limit that was approved by Supreme Court, I told you in 2000, uh, sorry, in 1992. And also it is being said that it will trigger a national debate or it will lead to the revival of Mandal versus Kamandal politics. Now, what is Mandal versus Kamandal? Okay, Mandal, okay, so Mandal Commission talk about the backward classes. So, Mandal politics means the politics of backwardness. Kamandal, politics of forward classes. Okay, so between backward and forward classes, now politics will be driven. So, this is something that is going to happen. Okay. And guys, here, what has happened? What has happened? Now, we'll see that how different, different political parties are going to respond. Okay. So, this is all about this article. I hope you have understood it. Now, guys, one thing, one thing you need to keep in your mind, one thing you need to keep in your mind is that background of this particular development is actually more important. If you don't know that background, you are not going to understand the nitty gritties of that. So, I hope that you have taken that, that down also. Moving to next article, what is a uterus transplant and what does it mean to have one? Okay, so this article again we are going to see with respect to GS paper number 3 science and technology, GS paper number 3 science and technology as well as for health also we can take this particular article. Okay, now moving on. So basically why this article has come in the news? Recently doctors in UK, they have conducted a successful uterus transplant. They have conducted a successful uterus transplant from a 40 year old woman and it has been transplanted to her 34 year old sister. Now these ages who was sister and all such thing is not important. Now before going on in this article, let's take some basic background information then you will be able to understand this article more effectively. See guys understand this thing that when we talk about infertility, infertility around the world is increasing. Specifically when we talk about infertility in India, as per a report by AIMS, as per a report by AIMS, it is provided that 10 to 15 percent of married couple, they face problem of infertility, okay. Now, when we talk about infertility, infertility, infertility could be because of three reasons. It could be because of three reasons. Number one, it, they can be male specific reason. Now, what is male specific reason? For example, sperm count in male is less, sperm count in male is less and because of that, fertility is not happening or sperm potency, sperm potency is not up to the mark that sperm is not potent to fertilize the female egg, okay. So, male specific reason, then the second could be female specific reason, there can be female specific reason and these reasons have specifically to do with, to do with, to do with the potency of female eggs, it has to do with the potency of female egg, is it clear or not? And the third is, third is there are many unexplained reasons, many unexplained reasons. Now guys understand this particular thing, the, uh, there can be unexplained reasons. Now understand this particular thing guys that once, once the male sperm has fertilized a female egg, male sperm has fertilized the female egg. So basically uterus will be, uterus will be the organ in the body of female which will hold the fetus, which will hold the fetus. But many number of times what happen, uterus, uterus is not, uterus is not congenial for the growth of a child, okay. Uterus has hostile conditions for the child or uterus is not capable. So therefore, what happens, these women cannot conceive a child even after the female egg has been fertilized with the sperm, 
ओके नाउ सच वुमेन दे हैव और सच कपल वट ऑप्शन दे हैव दे हैव एन ऑप्शन दैट दे कैन गो फॉर सरोगेसी दे कैन गो फॉर सरोगेसी अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग इफ प्रॉब्लम इज एट मेल्स एंड मेल्स एंड देन द अदर मेल्स स्पम कैन बी टेकन ओके इफ इफ द प्रॉब्लम इज एट द फीमेल इफ द फी प्रॉब्लम इज एट फीमेल्स एग देन अदर फीमेल्स एग्स कैन बी टेकन अप दे कैन बी फर्टिलाइज विद द स्पम इन अ लैब थ्रू आई वी एफ इन विट्रो फर्टिलाइजेशन देन दे कैन बी प्लेसड इन द वेमेन्स बॉडी But if a problem is in the uterus, if the problem is in the uterus, the woman has to go for the couple has to go for a surrogacy. But now what has happened? Uterus transplant is also being made possible. So what can happen? A uterus from a healthy woman can be taken, and that uterus could be plast planted in the body of another woman, and she can she can then give conceive a child. Okay. Now usually what happens? The women who have uh, let's say the women who are little bit aged. or who are not planning to go for further more children these women can donate the uterus to another women clear this is going on and uk has successfully conducted the successful u uh, transplant of uterus and when we talk about india already in u india uterus transplant has happened in the past and after the transplant of uterus a child has also been born to that particular women so uterine transplant baby has also been born in india way back in 2018 now guys this thing is opening up many other domains many other frontiers for example now that debate is going on discussion is going on that we also need to open the possibilities of transplanting uterus from deceased donor deceased donor the people who have died their uterus can be transplanted to women okay one thing now this particular transplanting uterus from diseased donor why it is going to be important now understand this thing in uterus transplant there is one ethical dimension comes what ethical dimension comes now see this thing there are two type of donations one are do donations that are being done to undo or to solve some life threatening problem to solve some life threatening problem for example there is a person and that person's both the kidneys have malfunctioned and if he kidney will not be given to that person that person will die that person will die okay now this is a donation which is to be done for a life threatening case but when we talk about uterus uterus donation uterus donation it this particular procedure is just done so that another person can also experience the joy of a parentage if let's say a woman has malfunctioning uterus there is no life threatening condition in most of the cases no life threatening condition but by getting uterus she will get to experience a more joy which earlier she is not experiencing but when she is getting uterus from other women that other women's uterus whose uterus is being extracted she will undergo pain she will undergo pain and this becomes an ethical issue that is it ethical is it ethical to subject now read very carefully is it ethical to subject a healthy person to undergo a medical procedure that can harm this person for the benefit of another person that can harm this person for the benefit of another person if it would have been a life threatening condition then it could have been justified but now it is not a life threatening condition so how far you can justify harming a healthy person taking out his organ and giving to other person so that another person can experience joy okay now this ethical problem will be solved if uterus is being taken from the deceased people if uterus is being taken from deceased people okay so this is one ethical dimension that is important that you need to understand here okay then uh okay one more thing when we talk about ethics gs paper number 4 the in topic number 1 there is applied ethics in applied ethics there is biomedical ethics in biomedical ethics this dimension can be used in your ethics please note it down okay now further guys the attempts are also being made to develop bioengineered uterus bioengineered uterus which will be which will be grown by taking the stem cells from a women's blood okay further basically by developing these bioengineered uterus uterus can also be given uterus can also be given to for example trans women recipients okay trans women recipients however in them hormonal changes are also to be done and there is will also be a need of a creation of an artificial vagina however there will be also medical complications that are also there okay now in this particular article further step by step explanation has also been given that how the uterus transplant is done okay first this medicine is given then this medicine is done then the uterus is extracted then it is now that is not important for our examination and i'll not suggest you to go and even read that for our exam because we are not preparing for 
medical exam we are preparing for upsc okay that is all about this article and important aspects i hope you have understood it and now moving to next article retribution for the south accolades for the north retribution for the south accolades for the north now basically this particular article we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 2 polity and governance gs paper number 2 polity and governance okay now now basically guys the article is talking about article is talking about that how states population size how states population size decides states political and economic significance states political and economic significance now we know this is a very common sense explanation okay see if there are more number of people in a state that will mean that it will have more number of seats in lok sabha if there are more number of people in a state it will also determine that how much they are going to contribute to economy okay more people means more demographic dependent more human resource more human resource means economic benefits will be there to the state but apart from that other political and economic gains are also there that we are going to discuss in this particular article okay now let's start this particular article first of all some basic background information you need to know and then we'll go in details of this article now first of all guys you need to know about article 81 okay we have discussed it earlier also what is article 81 article 81 simply provides this particular thing that now see for the sake of election for the sake of election entire country is divided in constituencies for example lok sabha election entire country will be divided in constituency and from every constituency there will be one person which will represent that particular constituency okay so for elections we divide country in the constituencies now article 81 of constitution provide that every constituency should be equal in terms of the size of population should be equal in terms of size of population for example for example this is constituency a this is constituency b fine now you can see that size of constituency a is small size of constituency b is big this is the geographical size but but understand this particular thing there might be the possibility that in constituency a there are 1000 people it is a densely packed region in constituency b also there is 1000 people but here population this particular region is not densely populated this particular region is such where people live uh, uh, for example ladakh for example ladakh population density is very less in ladakh but when you go to delhi when you come to delhi population density is very high in delhi so when we talk about constituencies constituencies are determined on the basis of population and not on the basis of area not on the basis of area every constituency should have similar number of people so that every representative is representing similar number of people so that every mp is representing similar number of a people this particular thing has been provided by article 81 again we'll read article 81 of indian constitution stipulates provides that lok sabha constituencies of the country should be equal by the size of population not by region not by geography but by population now understand this particular thing guys every census every census now see uh, after every few years what will happen population will change some region population will go up some region population will go down so again we need to redraw the constituencies in the entire country and these redrawing of constituency happens after census now 1971 1971 so in 1971 census happened okay now 1970 was also the time when in india population explosion was going on and at this point of a time government was coming out with the many population control measures now government in 1970 they came out to this conclusion that population will go up we try to control the population fine so what will happen very rapidly the changes will come so they say that for few years we will freeze any revision of constituency we freeze any revision of constituency and what happened there was 42nd constitutional amendment act came in 1976 and they said that for next 25 years constituencies will not be revised for next 25 years constituencies will not be revised so that in meanwhile we can control our population okay and too many revisions are not needed okay however what happened now 25 years since 1976 means 2001 in 2001 again one constitutional amendment act came that is the 84th constitutional amendment act 
and it again extended that freeze for more 25 years. The freeze that was started in 1976, it was extended in 2001 to more 25 years. So therefore, therefore, till 2026, till 2026 as of now, the constituencies have been frozen. They have not been revised. They have not been revised. Is it clear or not? Now, what will happen? The census will happen and maybe in 2026, these constituencies will be revised. Now, article says that you see in last 50 years, that is 1976 to 2026, how population growth has happened. So, they say that North Indian states, North Indian states, states which are the Hindi speaking states, their population has increased from 44% to 48.2% means population is increased. Population control policies were not successful in North India, their population actually increased. But in South India, population control policies were successful and their population has actually went down. Their population declined from 24.9% to 21.1%. Okay, so this is two changes that have come. Uh, so, population decline has happened in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Telangana. Now, in 2026, we will, in 2026, we will, will redefine the constituencies. Now, I told you in the start, I told you in the start that constituencies will be decided on the basis of population, will be decided on the basis of population. Means, where more population, they will have more seats. Where less population, they will have less seats. So, now article says that actually North India will get more seats in Lok Sabha. North India will get more seats in Lok Sabha. Their representation will increase by 6.81%. And the South India's representation will decline by 4.24%. Now, from a very long period of time, there is this narrative that the national politics is driven by Delhi. Okay. Largely, it means that national politics is driven by North India. Okay, and now it is being said that even more, more political clout will go to North India. And they say that actually this is a kind of a penalty, this is a kind of a punishment for South India because they controlled their population. They should have been appreciated, they should have been rewarded, but because they controlled their population in a negative way, they are being penalized, their political clout is going down. Their political clout is going down. Is it clear or not? Fine. Now, here it says that, for example, now different, different countries, what they do, they actually balance out this anomaly because every country, some region will have less population, some region will have more population. Okay, so they balance out this thing. For example, they give example of Canada. Now, guys, article gives example of Canada. Don't curse me that I have taken the example of Canada because of this issue that is right now going on. Okay, fine. So, just on a lighter note, so Canada. What Canada does, Canada increases the proportion of representation in the national parliament for the less populous provinces. Fine, so less populous provinces, they are given more representation. Some similar kind of an arrangement, we also need to come out with the India. Now, article says this particular thing that we follow first past the post system, where a person having the maximum vote will win all the elections. Now, the article is again talking about this particular thing only that reducing the proportion of southern states fine reducing the proportion will act as a disincentive for these states and will act as an incentive for the states which not took population control measures okay and the article is saying that in other areas also south indian states they have faced a disincentive for example for example in terms of the fiscal transfer financial transfer now basically finance commission finance commission from time to time recommend that how much funds will be given to the different different state it come out with the horizontal transfer formula horizontal transfer formula fine x state will give this money will get this money y state will get this money and while determining every state's share of grants they consider population they consider population now what happened when we talk about the 15th finance commission 15th finance commission provided that we will consider population but we will consider population on the basis of the 2011 census. 2011 census. What this means? This means that the state having more population will get more money. State having more population will get more money. Southern Indian states will again be at disadvantage because they have reduced their population. So they say that when popula population criteria of 2011 is being used to give the grants, again South India, they get a disadvantage. Moreover, or giving grants, one more consideration is also there, which is an important one. That is per capita income of a state. Per capita income of a state. Now, understand two things. If a state's per capita income is less, it means they need more money. 
if a state's per capita income is high it means that they are already a rich state they might need not they might not need more grant from union government so basically low per capita income states they get more money now understand this thing per capita will automatically go down if population is high population is high let's say i just will give you a very small and a basic example suppose in my family there are two people and i am the breadwinner of my family i earn 10000 rupees okay two people 10000 rupees 5000 per head let's say again i am the breadwinner i am earning 10000 rupees but in my family there are 10 people 1000 per head okay so as population will go up per capita income comes down usually so again what is happening north indian state they are getting more advantage and south indian state they are at disadvantage so article is saying this particular thing that now 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 you go and read the heading now heading will make more sense retribution for the south accolades for the north retribution means a punishment for the south and accolades means appreciation for the north this is something that is happening so this is article now guys when we talk about the federal issues gs paper number 2 federal issues in gs paper number 2 federal issues this kind of an element can be used and guys now we see that many questions are being asked on such kind of a themes so please use it that is all guys about this particular thing now moving to the next article now yes moving on to the next article keeping tabs on carbon with an accounting system keeping tabs on carbon with an accounting system okay now the article uh, article will be important for gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 environment will see this particular article now article is talking about two important keywords or two important concepts that is going to be important for our gs paper number 3 and please use these keywords first article talks about poly crisis article talks about poly crisis now poly crisis as a term poly crisis a term means interconnected and compounding crisis that will come because of climate change for example for example as climate is changing average temperature is going up as average temperature is going up what is happening glaciers are melting at a fast rate as glaciers are melting more water will come into the lakes glacial lakes that are there in himalayas and as more water will come in these glacial lakes what will happen these glacial lakes will flood immediately or suddenly there will be the glacial outburst floods that will come if you remember if you just uh, remember fine today on the first page today on the first page there was this one particular article that was there talking about the glacial lake burst that has happened in sikkim okay so seven dead as glacial lake burst in sikkim what is this glacial lake burst so it simply means that guys suppose there is this big glacier okay this glacier is melting slowly slowly and the water is getting deposited in a kind of a natural lake that has been created these natural lakes are bound by stones boulders silt sand now these are artificial natural lakes and they cannot accommodate a sudden increase in water but as temperature is increasing glacier will melt more fast more water will come and sometimes this particular lake the barriers okay will fail okay and it will lead to lake outburst glacial lake outburst so this is actually something that is happening okay now understand this particular thing guys so what happens temperature increased glacial melt increased glacial lakes they got bursted what it led it led to the flood so temperature rise led to flood as that flood have come that flood will also ignite many landslides fine so temperature flood landslides so one crisis leading to multiple crises one crisis leading to multiple crises is it clear or not so there is a climate poly crisis refers to interconnectedness and compounding crises related to climate change one crisis leading to other crises now this crisis is not only on the disaster front there is also the socio economic and environmental implications of the climate change that is there okay for example for example when we talk about the climate change it includes many of the physical changes for example temperature is rising sea level is rising extreme weather events is rising but by this particular thing social damages 
social impacts are also there in the society. Now we find know this particular thing that the most impacted because of climate change are the are the poor people are the poor people. So it is leading to many social problems. It is leading to economic problems. It is leading to health problems. Okay. So now this term poly crisis was made popular by Adam Tooze. If you remember, you can use this name also. It otherwise not at all a big problem. So article says this particular thing that actually today climate is not a singular problem. Climate is not a singular problem. Climate change is leading to multiple problems. It is leading to poly crisis. Fine. Environmental crisis is leading to social crisis. It is leading to economic crisis. It is leading to infrastructural crisis. So further article says this particular thing that we need to understand this particular complexity and keeping this complexity in mind, we need to approach the climate change problem. We need to approach climate change problem. And article is here introducing the concept of carbon infrastructure. Article is in introducing the uh, concept of the carbon infrastructure and carbon accounting. Carbon infrastructure and carbon accounting. Let's understand this particular thing. Basically, guys, understand that today there is a household which is emitting some carbon. Let's say there is a household in a village. They are making food by using the, by burning the wood. They are emitting some carbon. Let's say I live in an urban household. I am not using the wood for, for making the, my food, but I am using electricity. That electricity comes from coal powered plants. In a way, I am also emitting some carbon dioxide, some carbon. Let's say there is some institution which is also using a lot of energy. They are emitting some carbon. So carbon accounting means that every institution's carbon footprint should be accounted. I emitted X amount of carbon. This unit accounted Y amount of carbon. This unit accounted Z amount of carbon. So every unit's carbon should be accounted. Okay, so carbon accounting. Okay, now article talks about this particular thing. Article talks about this particular thing that nationally we need to nationally we need to introduce the national carbon accounting system national carbon accounting system and in this national carbon accounting system we will account that how much carbon is being emitted by individuals households okay and one carbon accounting framework will come in country okay on that particular basis on that particular basis carbon books can be prepared on that particular basis carbon books can be prepared now understand this thing suppose i am emitting 10 ton of carbon per year but i have also grown five trees in my backyard five trees in my backyard now those trees what they are doing they are capturing some carbon also let's say i am also using solar panels on my roof and some of electricity come from solar panel okay so the plants that are there in my backyard it is leading to some carbon sequestration okay so every household carbon output and carbon input will be calculated and we will maintain these carbon books and we also should make these carbon books or this carbon accounting, accounting mandatory for business and individuals. They have to declare that how much carbon they emitted in entire year, entire month. Now article says that on this particular basis, on this particular basis, we will be able to come out with an objective assessment that how carbon emission can be controlled. Fine, how carbon emission can be controlled. Which areas are emitting more carbon? Fine which areas are emitting less carbon and that particular thing can design the government policies that particular thing can design the effective government policies is it clear or not so this is the idea that has been given okay now guys i you should understand these particular ideas because these are the unique and new ideas okay and when you are writing your answers please give these kind of suggestions also just don't write the 20 year old suggestions that we need to come out with the climate conscious policies green infrastructure green growth now that has happened come out with these kind of suggestions okay moving on guys into the next article okay next article women's quota women's quota panchayat to parliament now this article will see with respect to gs paper number two women related issues even in gs paper number one women related issues are there okay now article is talking about recent recent historic landmark women reservation bill that has come women reservation bill that has come okay now this women reservation bill it is the 106th amendment to indian constitution and it provides for reservation of 33 percent of the seats for women in lok sabha and 33% of the seats 
should be reserved for the women into the state legislative assembly. In the past also, multiple attempts have been made to reserve one third seats of women in parliament as well as SLA. For example, in 1996, women reservation bill came, but it did not got passed. For the first time, National Prospective Plan for Women, 1988, it recommended one third seats for the women. National Prospective Plan for Women, 1988. But now, finally, in 2023, we have reserved one third of the seats for the women. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, already if we see, already if we see, uh, coincidentally, it also marks, it also marks the 30, uh, 30 year anniversary of the 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. Now, by 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act, we constitutionalized Panchayati Raj institution and urban local bodies. And here, we, pro we already provided that one third of the seats should be reserved for the women and the office of chairperson in panchayat and municipalities, it should also be reserved for the women. Okay, so already one third seats were reserved here and now one third seats for the women are being reserved in municipal, in SLAs as well as the, uh, as well as the Lok Sabha. Now, article says this particular thing that actually we have seen that when women have been given more representation in elected bodies, they actually have invested on, invested on social development. Now, article talks about this particular thing that according to a 2004 research paper on panchayats functioning in West Bengal and Rajasthan, it shows that women leaders, they invest more in public goods, okay, they in, in invest more in public goods such as the health, sanitation, education, they invest more. And also, they ensure that even more women participate in panchayat meetings and indirectly, they support women empowerment, they support women empowerment. Also, there is one more study of 2011 carried in 11 states which provides that the panchayats which have been led by women, they have invested more on drinking water, education, roads, etc. So, women representation in politics, it very clearly have more impact. It very clearly leads to improvement of social indicators. But as of now, whether the same change will come in parliament also, whether the same change will come in SLA also, we don't know. Because uh, this is too soon to conclude it. Moreover, guys, understand this particular thing that issues that are there in Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly, they are also not very much straightforward, very, not very much straightforward. Moreover, understand this particular thing. Just a minute. Okay, there are some questions. I will take it just after the this article. Now, moving on. So, uh, I was telling you that women have played a very important role in panchayat, ULBs. But whether the same role they can play at state legislative assembly and parliament, we don't know that. Moreover, it was said that actually women should be empowered before they participate in elections. They should be they should be given some basic political awareness that how to carry political campaigning, how to prepare the political manifesto, okay, all that particular thing is to be done. And for that particular thing, there should have been a political discussion before taking up this particular issue. But what happened abruptly, we just came out with the Women Reservation Bill and it got passed, it got passed, okay. So, this is something that has happened. Moreover, when this Women Reservation Bill came, they have also attached one condition, understand this condition very carefully. They have said that women will not be given reservation in 2024. In 2026, census will happen. And on the basis of census, we will come out with, on the basis of census, what we will do? We will come out with the new delimitation. What is this delimitation? We will redefine the constituencies on the basis of new population criteria. You remember just two articles back, I have discussed it. Okay. Now they say that that thing will open many disputes between North India and South India. Okay, and in the mid of that dispute, women reservation might become less important, might become less important. And what you have done, you have attached this particular thing to a future development. Women reservation has been attached to a future development of 2026, that is a delimitation and census. So, it should not have happened. It should not have 
happened it becomes politically fraught because of the dispute that will come between the north and south so this is all guys that has come in this particular article okay now moving to next article okay so let's take the doubt okay sir according to anuradha bhasin judgment right to internet is not implemented or it's not capable in manipur still banned in our state yeah. yes we discussed this thing many number of times in fact that right to internet was recognized by the supreme court fine in radha basin case but yes it is still banned in manipur um, there are um, uh, see first of all when we talk about uh, any funda now there are two type of explanations two type of explanations one can be a purely academic explanation and one explanation is little bit different when we talk about academic explanation always it is said that fundamental rights they are subjected to many other situations such as law and order so it might be justified that there might be a law and order situation going on and miscreants might use that internet for further aggravating the law and order problem so we have banned it one angle another angle comes that that is fine but also freedom of speech and expression is also there and for speech and expression article uh, for for that internet is crucial so that internet should be given this is one side of our story on another side of the story okay we find this particular thing that actually the way supreme court interprets the law or rights and the way actually it is implemented on the ground are two different things okay and you will find such kind of a divergence at many places okay sir what is the daily timing of the session so that i can take session on time sandeep singh okay dear we try to keep the session at 7:30 7:15 7:30 am but some days it gets little bit here and there depending on some another commitments that are there but we try to keep it at this time around okay uh, and uh, yes sandeep one more thing please jo join the telegram okay on telegram you will get all those updates okay so link for telegram is given in description box okay now a new defense indigenization list has futuristic weapons okay now guys no need to go too much in detail in this particular article what has happened so defense ministry defense ministry they have released their fifth positive indigenization list with 98 items 98 items now what is this positive indigenization list so basically so basically guys we came out with atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan in 2020 when we talk about atmanirbharta that is to be self sufficient to be self capable we want to implement atmanirbharta in the defense sector also now understand this thing india has been traditionally the largest importer of the defense weaponry largest importer of defense weaponry and this particular thing has been provided multiple number of times in sipri sipri report sipri okay now we want to become self capable we want to become atmanirbhar in the defense weaponry so therefore we come out a time to time with the positive indigenization list now we have come out with this 98 item list means these 98 items have to be procured within india okay so these 98 items have to be procured within india first priority is to be procured from india fine then they have also come out with swavalamban 2.0 if you remember just i think few days back we have discussed the swavalamban 2.0 also in detail what is a swavalamban swavalamban 2.0 means it is the second version of swavalamban so first version of swavalamban already came now in the swavalamban what happens fine what happens in navy it comes out with certain technologies that are to be indigenized last year 75 technologies were thrown open and they were to be indigenized our startups our industries need to develop these 75 technologies so such kind of a challenge is given to our startups our industries okay so in swavalamban what happens navy provides indigenization road map for itself so this is something that has come this is something that has come now by indigenization of technologies by positive indigenization list what will happen it will focus on import substitution of components we ourselves will develop these components and we will become atmanirbhar that is all about it beyond that no need to go too much in detail okay then guys we have this article government eases aircraft recovery rules government eases aircraft recovery rules now telling you very frankly again guys no need to go too much in detail because this is a kind of a corporate uh, matter but still academic academic undertone is there fine let's understand this thing 
basically guys there is there are two terms one is insolvency one is insolvency and other is bankruptcy other is bankruptcy okay these two terms you might have heard first of all let's understand the difference between these two terms insolvency and bankruptcy insolvency will be declared by a person when a person's liabilities increases more than the person's asset and a person is not able to pay back for the liabilities person will declare insolvency for example for example i have 100 rupees of asset and i have 50 rupees of cash 100 rupees of asset and 50 rupees of cash 150 rupees but my liabilities that money that i owe to people money that i have taken on loan from people that is 500 rupees so even if i sell all my assets and you i use my all the cash i cannot pay my 500 rupees liabilities from my 150 rupees so i am not able to pay back what i will do i will declare my insolvency that i am insolvent i am not able to do that then what will happen the court will intervene the bodies the institution will intervene and what they will do they will try to come out with an arrangement they will uh, they will liquidate my assets and will give some 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 money to all the people to whom i have to give the money two things formally we use it in different informal sorry informally in layman terms we use it differently but insolvency is declared by a person and then authorities will declare a person bankrupt bankruptcy is a legal status bankruptcy is a legal status now let's come to the corporate level time to time what happens many corporates they go in financial losses they take financially bad decisions and they are also not able to take forward their business and they declare for insolvency okay now what happens when insolvency will be declared by any company okay obviously there will be some process that has to be taken up so that assets can be liquidated and money can be given to all the people who have lended money to that organization and for that particular thing we have insolvency and bankruptcy code we have ibc insolvency and bankruptcy code so as per insolvency and bankruptcy code the insolvency and bankruptcy process is completed now guys till the time ibc will complete its process insolvency and bankruptcy code according to that fine national company law tribunal nclt national company law tribunal will complete this particular process till that time all the assets that are there with the company that assets will be seized that asset cannot be given to anyone okay that is something that will happen now coming to the present case so there is this particular company go air this particular company go air so what happened guys you know uh, sorry go first we have this go first so basically what happened we saw this particular thing that few days back few months back actually go first applied for insolvency they applied for insolvent okay they declared insolvency they applied for bankruptcy now the go air go first they have lot of aircraft they have lot of aircrafts now these aircrafts are actually not their aircrafts these aircraft they have taken on lease these aircraft they have taken on lease and obviously they are not paying paying the money to that company also from where they have taken this aircraft on lease now what happened as they declared their insolvency their national company law tribunal provided that all the assets of all the assets of the go first on that moratorium was imposed those assets cannot be transferred to anyone those assets cannot go to anyone okay this process is now started now the companies who have given the planes to lease planes on lease to the go first they will come and they will say that these planes are not of these they, these planes were not of the go first these planes they have taken from us on rent return us the planes because every day our plane is just trapped in your insolvencies arrangement we are losing money every day so give back our planes okay but nclt was not giving back the planes because they say that rules don't allow us so therefore what has happened what has happened government had come out with new rules and have eased the aircraft recovery has eased the aircraft recovery now the people who have given the companies who have given them on lease they can recover them more easily so this is something that has happened okay fine so the move comes after lesser moved to court following the nclt nclts moratorium okay now when we talk about india when we talk about india india is a signatory of the cape town convention fine that lets leisures take possession of their leased assets okay and because india is the signatory of cape town position uh, so convention 
India has to amend these particular rules and that has happened. Okay. So this is all about it. Okay. Now guys, beyond that, not even a single word you need to read for examination because then it will not be useful for examination. No PhD is required on this topic. Okay. Moving on to next uh, mains practice question for today. So question reads that the Constitution 106 Amendment Act portends a new chapter in India's democratic journey analyze. Democratic journey analyze. So what is this 106 Amendment? Okay. Amendment to give reservation to women. Okay. So this is about it. It will be a GS paper number 2, 10 marker question. Okay. So that is all. And guys, with this, we come to an end through the today's session. I hope that you have liked the video. And guys, if you have liked the video, please don't be too greedy. Please hit the like button. I don't want like because I want to feel good. We want likes and your comments on our channel because by that engagement, YouTube algorithm will push our channel. And I hope that you will not mind if our channel grows because we are doing hard work from a long time. And I think that we have proved this particular thing that we also deserve a little bit of growth for our channel and for that your support is very much necessary so please share the channel the video to your friends don't think that if you will share they will get to learn a lot of valuable content and they will outperform you no material books content is already there always it has been there in the market but it depends that how well you use that resource okay fine so that is about it now we'll meet tomorrow. Till then, please take care of yourselves, guys. Thank you so much.